On its release, the Felarx was simply incredible. It might not have had the most amazing incarnate form, but oh my god did it ever pack a punch in its standard form. Fast forward a couple of years, is the Felarx still an amazing single target weapon? And well... Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be re-diving deeper into the Felarx. Now this weapon is far from being a new player friendly weapon, so we're gonna go straight into an end game setup. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Felarx. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and then we're going to be moving over into incarnations and what you should pick for the Felarx. But in the meantime, this, my friends, is a full-blown shotgun. She's automatic, so she's easy to use. And as you can see right there, that is a shell-by-shell -shell reload, stern style. So you may love it or you may hate it. Actually, there's a couple of mechanics that essentially revolves around that one. Being an incarnate weapon, however, you know what that means. You gotta get yourself some headshots to charge that bar. While not all incarnate weapons need this functionality, this one definitely does. And with any level of charge right underneath your crosshairs, you can go incarnate form. And in incarnate form, this weapon is rather unique in the sense that it transforms from a shotgun, technically a two-handed range weapon, into double pistols. Act pistols, fantastic, right? They're amazing, right? Well, not really. You see, my friends, while the AK pistols are cool and all whatnot, they fire this projectile that seems to have a little bit of AoE, but it doesn't. And the damage that it deals in combination with the fire rate and the stats that it has are essentially doing less damage than the normal form. The Felarx was the first devolving weapon. So, in essence, what you want to do is basically use this one in its normal form because it simply packs a greater punch. So bear that one in mind. Let's talk usability. Well, you point, you shoot, you win. It's a projectile-based attack. The travel speed is not bad. The accuracy is not great. Then again, you're not really 100% gonna go for headshots with this one, so it shouldn't really bother you. Again, it's a shotgun. What exactly did you expect? I feel the reload will be polarizing on this one, but if you get over the reload mechanic, you're gonna have yourself one fantastic time with this outstanding primary weapon. So let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. What you gotta bear in mind is that this is not a new player friendly weapon by any stretch of the imagination, so we're just gonna jump into a end game setup. The accuracy we don't care, the ammo maximum is gonna be 60, depending on the fire rate and the reload that you build on it, it might actually not be enough, more on that later. The fall off between 14 and 28, 14 meters between you and your target. And to be honest, it's not a whole lot, then again, it's a shotgun and considering the default spread on this one, you're gonna wanna stay within those 14 meters. Not that it matters because you have galvanized acceleration and this one will further increase that fall off range and of course increase the speed of the projectiles which makes it easier for you to aim at die enemies. Fire rate of 3 by default which is not good but we're gonna be playing around with that one. Magazine of 6 which again is not great but we're gonna be playing around with that one. Multi shot of 4 by default. Noise alarming reload at 3.7 seconds which is huge. Dude 3.7 seconds for what? For a grand total of 6 shells that's really not all that good and yeah, you're kind of right, but again, we're going to be playing with that one to bring it up the snuff. We're not going to be paying any attention to the incarnate form damage, we're just going to be paying attention to the normal form damage. You got yourself a critical chance of 10%, which is really not all that great, while the critical multiplier is decent at 2x. This is a weapon we're not going to be building into crit and hunter munitions. Halle, freaking Luya, some actual build diversity, yay. Impact Puncture and Slash, and Slash is the highest, which is fantastic, but again, we're not really gonna focus on applying a whole lot of Slash. This one, believe it or not, packs one hell of a punch in raw damage performance. But let's take a look at those incarnations, shall we? Level 1 simply enables the transformation, but at level 2, you get your first real choice. Kinetic Baffle, minus 50% weapon recoil. You also got some options on this one. You got Frictionless Flight, plus 50% projectile flight speed. We don't care because of the excellent slot on the weapon. We're going to be going for the galvanized acceleration. And you also got Attuned Accuracy with 40% accuracy when aiming. If you're going to be going for Deadhead, then you might want to switch to this one. My recommendation, as per the usual, less weapon recoil makes it simply funner, funner, that's it, funner for me to enjoy the weapon. At level 3, we're gonna be picking up Mounting Momentum. Reload increases fire rate by 10% per shell. Per shell. Resets on reload. So essentially what you want to do with this one is try to always reload from empty so you get the maximum amount of fire rate. 
this buff stays with you for the entire duration until you reload so there's no timer on it you do have a couple of additional options as well this one is called evolved auto loader plus 50 percent magazine reload per second when holstered and this is going to be fantastic for players that enjoy to wish swish with their melee then switch to the shotgun boom boom or switch to their secondaries etc are you that kind of player you're going to be loving evolved auto loader i'm not that kind of player i simply focus in on a single weapon while playing with a in a mission and just kind of have fun with that but of course it's not the only way to play the game dual mode chamber and this is probably one of the coolest incarnations in the game though it can cause a bit of confusion Reload toggles the weapon between 100% projectile flight speed and 4 meters worth of punch through. And to make this very simple, if you reload from odds, you're gonna be changing the buff. If you reload from events, you're gonna be maintaining the buff. And the buff you can track in the upper right portion of the screen. However, in the simulacrum, it does get a little bit buggy, so we're gonna head on to an actual mission. Take a look at the upper right portion of the screen. You see I got a buff called dual mode chamber. It says a little four. That is the four meters worth of punch through. And let's say I want to maintain this buff. That means I got to reload from even. So that's going to be six, zero, two, and four in my case. Let's go all the way to zero. Take a look at the upper right portion of the screen, how it toggles the buff between one and another as you reload shell by shell. And I still got that four meters worth of punch through. But let's say, hey dude, hold on, I wanna change right now. I don't want the punch through anymore. I wanna switch to the projectile flight speed. That means I need to reload from odds. So that's gonna be one, three, and five. Let's do three and reload. Boom, 100%. That means the 100% plus PFS. And essentially that's how the buff works. Now these buffs do carry over to incarnate form, but unfortunately every single time you change the weapon from normal to incarnate form, the buff also changes, regardless of what magazine you had when you did the change. So for example, if you take a look at the upper right portion of the screen, you see I have dual mode chamber with the 4 meters worth of punch through, yes? So I'm gonna go shoot guy in head, I got guy right here, I shoot him in head so I can go incarnate form. If you take a look at my magazine, it says 14, that is a evens number that means my buff shouldn't change but if i do change to incarnate form i switched over to the 100 projectile flight speed and you might say hold on maybe it's the other way around unfortunately not let's shoot this guy in head one more time right now i am on an odds evens number we're gonna switch to an odds number again i got the plus 100 pfs i'm gonna go incarnate form and it changed to dual mode chamber four meters worth of punch through. So regardless of the magazine size, when you go in Karnan form, the buff changes. So you gotta plan ahead if you plan on using this one in Karnan form. I know that's a whole lot of talk and a lot of explanations for a talent that you're not really gonna be using, but I thought you guys might appreciate to know exactly how this one functions. Moving onward to the tier four talents, by the way, did you notice that the new incarnate forms have only four tiers of talents and these have five. Yeah, the original incarnate weapons. Not important. What is important at that evolution for you got Brutal Edge. This one gives you 10% critical chance and 10% status chance. I do not recommend this talent unless, of course, you're going to be going for the tried and true recipe of Hunter Munitions and Viral. If you're not sick of that by now. Why don't you try this one? Racking Wrath. 20% status chance minus 10% crit. Blazer, what are you doing? Shooting yourself in the foot, eh? No, not true, because you see, at the final evolution, evolution 5, you're going to be getting yourself devastating attrition. Look familiar? Well, it bloody well should. 50% chance to deal 2000% damage on non-critical hits, so I'm looking for that minus critical chance ribbon, which everybody seems to charge an arm and a leg for, even though this is a dispawn one weapon, and I don't really recommend uh, ribbons. But back to this one, the final option is called Incarnate Catalyst. Headshots build 50% more Incarnate Transmutation Gauge. With this talent activated, if you want to build a weapon into its incarnate form, a single shot with all of the multi shots stacked up and everything, you're getting yourself like 90% worth of charge. It's absolutely insanity, but we don't really play into incarnate form now, do we? So we're gonna stick to Racking Wrath. We already talked about Devastating Attrition. Next up, you got Ruptured Plentitude. This is truly an amazing talent. Check it out. On punch through free enemy, 70% ammo efficiency for 20 seconds. You know what that means. Do, 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 which is insanity. Keep in mind that this one does not carry over to the incarnate form because in incarnate form, the ammunition that you have there is not counted as ammunition per se, but as a charge. So bear that one in mind. I love this one. I would want to use it so badly if it was on another tier because you simply cannot sacrifice devastating attrition. Not with a build such as this. If you're going for the Hunter Munitions approach and at level 4 get that 10% critical chance, 10% status chance, then sure, go for this one instead. 
But for the time being, I still recommend you go for Devastating Attrition. As for Agile Executor, honestly, this talent, again, I said this in 2022, I haven't changed my mind. It's a pro way talent, gain 50% ammo efficiency while aim gliding and sliding. And while some of us like to aim glide and slide and do all of that stuff, a lot of others simply do not enjoy using this one. You're better off using Energized Munition, so no, forget about this one. So, to make it clear, this would be the meta way, devastating attrition from my point of view. And if you want to go for the classic hunter munitions way, you go for rupture plentitude and at level 4, you switch to brutal edge. For the time being, we're gonna keep it as is. As mentioned before, we're gonna jump into a end game setup and it looks kind of like this. I tuned this build to deal with a new faction, with the murmur. This is why we have atomic fallout. Now atomic fallout on this one, 60% radiation, fantastic, but also doubly fantastic for the Felox. 40% magazine capacity and this is absolutely vital for a smooth gameplay, a more consistent, a more streamlined gameplay of the Felarks. But we're not gonna stop there. We're also gonna be going with Prime Ammo Stock and another 110%. That means we're going from 6 shells to 15 shells and keep in mind that fire rate buff that we have. The one called Mounting Momentum. So with 15 we're gonna get 150% fire rate. So you should always try to reload from empty just so you can get that full fire rate. Galvanized Savvy is here because it must. We're also gonna be making Corrosive on the weapon with Prime, Char Shell and Toxic Barrage. In the Excellent slot again, Galvanized Acceleration because it's a must. As for Shotgun Vendetta, from my point of view on the Felarks, this is a must have. It's not your only option, however. Merciless does have its advantages for that 30% reload speed. But Shotgun Vendetta, 75% reload speed and that massive 180% multi-shot. The only problem is you gotta be in 5 meters of the target when you kill them. So the whole aiming, drop off, stay away from your target thing doesn't really apply with Vendetta. On the other hand, listen, it's 15 second uptime. So you kill one guy up close, then you can spend some time sniping other guys if that's what you're into. If this is too complicated for you and you don't want to hear about it, you simply go with Primary Merciless. Though keep in mind you already have Galvanized Savvy and Prime Point Blank on the weapon, which means what exactly? You got plenty of flat damage. Lazar, I don't like faction mods and considering that this weapon doesn't get its damage off by applying a whole lot of slashes or heat or any damage over time effect, this one doesn't really double dip all that much. So what you can do is simply go for even more multi-shot or something of the sort, fire rate or whatever else you prefer in terms of usability. What I would go for is even more reload speed because while 75% is good, you can go for even more than that, again, to work into that whole streamline experience. Trust me, the weapon doesn't need any more power than that. So. To prove the point, we're gonna be spawning in the, well, a mixture of targets actually. We're gonna have a couple of Murmur because this is the latest and greatest, but of course the fan favorite Corrupted Heavy Goon. And believe it or not, this is one of the few weapons that can make mincemeat even out of the hollowed vein in just a couple of shots. But hey, at the end of the day, seeing is believing. Now we're gonna be stacking up the weapon, but you'll see that it packs one hell of a punch, and these are still 180 Corrupted Heavy Goons with the Steel Path modifier enabled. I mean, look at this. And this is nowhere near full fire rate. Here we go. Mama, I'm reloading. Got the full buff? Oh, God. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? I mean, there were some rogue Clervin here once upon a time. As for the reload speed, my friends, it's not so bad with 75%, even with a magazine of 15. Look at this. It deleted even the hollowed vein. You know how many weapons can do that? Five, essentially. That is absolutely freaking brutal level of performance. Now hold on there, Baba Boy. I know what you're thinking. Lazar, what synergizes fantastically well with this weapon? What buff can I get to make it even more overpowered? Energized munitions. Allow me to show you how that one will work when I'm gonna be spawning in the same targets as before. Now, in case you haven't noticed, my Nova has energized munitions on her second ability, and I'm gonna show you exactly what that puppy can do. But again, we're starting off with the corrupted heavy goons as per usual. So I'm rolling at full fire rate, but then energized munitions it's on, right? So what I got there? 15. Still got 13. My ammunition reserve on zero, by the way. Nine. Look at this. Energized munitions plus this absolutely freaking glorious weapon. The fucking destroyed. In a single, technically, in a single reload, again, thanks to energized munitions. Now, granted, you're not gonna build energized munitions on every single one of your Warframes, but then again, you can and you should, especially for the Felarks, because it is 
fun. Now we're gonna be testing this one against the Murmur in the brand new survival mission on Demo. So for that, we're gonna have to replace Prime Clan's Corrupted. So again, if you don't want to go this route, you can go for more multi-shot, more fire rate, or even more magazine capacity. Now, ideally, what I would want here is instead of this, go with Prime Tactical Pump and get that 100% reload speed. So essentially, I get the best of both worlds. Now you got yourself the magazine and an insane amount of reload speed. It went down from 3.7 without taking into account the 75% we're going to be getting from Shotgun Vendetta. Welcome to Demos, my friends. Now, let's see what the Felarks can do versus these base level Steel Path targets. As per usual, I'm gonna try my absolute best not to skew the test results with any Warframe bus. We're gonna be using Revenant to survive, but we don't have any Arcane Acceleration, which wouldn't work anyway. You got Arcane Tempor for shotguns, and of course no Avenger, because we don't want to crit with this build. That should be pretty obvious by this point. That reload speed coupled together with that magazine capacity, absolutely bloody hilarious, dude. And again, try to reload from empty or from just a couple left. Beautiful, fantastic, glorious. Now, of course, you do spend a whole bunch of time reloading, so energized munitions, again, is definitely a thing you can go for if you want a more streamlined and a more consistent gameplay experience. But with this amount of fire rate and this amount of reload and magazine, in my opinion, you're good to go. It really depends on what exactly you're expecting from the weapon. Regardless, it's still gonna be blowing up essentially everything that stands before you in rather rapid fashion. Reload from empty, so we get the full shebang, and I think the Acolyte is down here. Wait, wait, come back. So that was essentially point-blank range, unloading an entire 15 shells of the magazine into that Acolyte, and essentially I just crashed half his shield. The theory here is the following. It looks like that either the damage attenuation is just nuking that level 5 perk, or evolution of the Felarx, the 2000% damage one. Either that, or it's just straight up not working. Those are the two theories. However, if you really want to make this one more proficient at taking out Acolytes, then you should really go for the crit approach, which is what we're going to be doing next, just so you can see a comparison of what it can do versus Acolytes, more specifically, yes, because when it comes to, like, dealing with everything else, there's no issue. First up, at Evolution 4, you're going to be switching from Racking Wrath over to Brutal Edge. And finally, at Evolution 5, you're going to switch to Ruptured Plentitude. This one will solve a lot of reloading and ammo issues without you having to go into Energized Munitions. As for the actual build of the weapon without any additional forma, it will look something along these lines. Essentially, we're going to be doing the exact same test as before. We still have the Diriga with the Vital just like we had initially. So, Flash is going to work because we have that fantastic Vital. We're gonna also show performance on normal average everyday mobs, but of course the point here is to see what are we gonna be doing to those acolytes now. Obviously, I don't have that big of a wallop anymore, I don't have the same fire rate as before, but... I'm still able to absolutely nuke these targets. Though, I'll be honest with you, I am missing that freaking fire rate. Still, that final level talent, that 70% uh, efficiency really helping out a lot when it comes to additional targets. So if you're running a Boban or a Nidus and you have the possibility of clumping up the targets, this will be absolutely fantastic. The buff is right here, it's called Rupture Plentitude, you got that 70% so you can always track your buff in the upper right portion of the screen. So you don't necessarily need to always worry about, hey, am I hitting enough enemies to trigger that efficiency or not. So you do have a decent, I want to say, amount of uptime out of the buff. Flash, flash, Acolyte coming to town, baby. This is it. This is what we wanted to see. What is the difference in performance for the Fell Arts if you go ham crit versus not ham crit? What it is? That it is. I'm going to shoot it. Oh, that is significant. Dude, dude. Excuse me. Excuse him. Oh, bubble. Not today, bubble guy. Yeah, nice try, guy. Nice try. Now, my friends, it's time to draw some conclusions regarding the Fell Arts. Is this still an amazing weapon? Well, of course it is. Is it top 10 worthy? Well, yeah, kinda. The problem with the Fell Arts is twofold. One, it's single target. And if we can get over that, the fact that we have a lot more powerful single target weapons in the game now than when the Fell Arts came out, for example, the Incarnate Boltor, it doesn't just have to contend with the uh, Fenmore, for example then it still packs the punch and it's still a competitive weapon. However, you do gotta take into account all the other available options to you out there. A crit build for more Acolyte performance, a non-crit build for everything else, essentially. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, my name has been Lazar. Like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, 
I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you want to suggest any particular type of content. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.